Hi there everybody, my name is Bruce and welcome to our second lesson on the introduction to electric current. In our first lesson we investigated and defined exactly what we meant by the term electric current. In this lesson I want to explain to you exactly what the function of electric current is by closely using an electric circuit which will be demonstrated using an electric circuit board. Whenever you flick a switch to put on a light, whether the light is a torch or uses mains electricity, the light is part of an electric circuit. Simple electric circuits are all around us, from ordinary household wiring to complex circuits in computers. Every day, electrical energy is continuously transferred by electric currents through a complex network of electrical circuits. Some circuits can be large and supply a whole community with electrical energy. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the components of a circuit and describe what happens when a current passes through an electrical circuit. Remember we defined that electric current is the rate of flow of electrical charge. Electric current is thus the flow of charge through an electrical conductor such as a length of copper wire. The electrical circuit is the unbroken path through which the electric current flows. Let us see now what that means. Here we have a simple electric circuit. It consists of a battery of three cells, a light bulb, a resistor and a switch. These components are connected together by two connecting leads. When the switch is closed, the cell pushes charge around the circuit. As the current passes through the bulb, it makes the bulb light up. This happens because there is a continuous path for the electric current to pass through. Now notice what happens when we open the switch. Notice that as soon as I open the switch, the light bulb does not glow anymore. Now why do you think that this happened? Let's think about it for a few seconds. When we opened the switch, a break occurred in the circuit and the charge could not flow. When we close the switch again, the circuit is re-established and charge can flow all the way around the circuit. Before I continue, let's quickly summarize what we have learnt from the demonstration using the circuit board. An electric circuit is an unbroken loop or closed path of conductive material that allows charge to flow continuously through it. If a circuit is broken, that means its conductive elements no longer form a complete path and there will be no continuous flow of charge through it. The current in this circuit is direct current. It is a flow of charge moving in the same general direction. Remember that any break in an electrical circuit will stop the electric current flowing through that circuit. Now let's look at another circuit and this time we will investigate how the amount of charge that's flowing will affect the electric current. Here is an electric circuit that has two light bulbs light bulb P and Q, through which electric current can pass. P and Q are of exactly the same type. They have the same specifications and they behave identically. When I close the switch, watch the light bulbs carefully. Can you see that light bulb P is glowing more brightly than light bulb Q? Q is very dim, so let's take a look at a close-up repeating the exact same experiment. Can you see how dim Q actually is? Why do you think this is so? The light bulbs are of the same type and they should behave identically. Light bulb P glows brighter than Q because a greater current passes through P than through Q. What we have learned from our investigation is that the greater the amount of electrical charge that flows through the circuit every second, the greater the electric current. Make sure that you learn this. The greater the amount of charge that flows per second, the greater the current. We use a unit of measurement called the Coulomb to measure charge. 
So when a large current passes through a light bulb, this means that there are more coulombs of charge passing through that light bulb in one second. Let's look at light bulb P. Light bulb P was brighter than light bulb Q. So obviously there were more coulombs of charge passing through light bulb P in one second as compared to Q. Let us use a model to better understand this concept. Here is a model of the circuit that we used. It has a battery of cells, light bulbs P and Q, the resistor R, and a switch. Let's count the number of coulombs of charge passing through light bulb P when the switch is closed. We will count in coulombs of charge. 1,25, 2,50, 3,75, and finally 5 coulombs of charge pass through in one second. Right, let's leave this count for light bulb P and have a look at light bulb Q. Here is light bulb Q. Let's count the coulombs of charge. Light bulb Q has only 3 coulombs of charge passing through it in one second. Thus we are able to conclude that the current passing through light bulb P compared to the current passing through light bulb Q is greater because more coulombs of charge pass through P than through light bulb Q in the same time. Now let's go back to our model and see exactly what is happening as charge moves around the circuit. Here is the circuit again. The switch is in the open position. There is no current passing through the circuit. Look at what is happening inside this length of connecting wire. The moving charges are electrons. They are able to move freely from atom to atom inside the metal. Notice that they move randomly in all directions. There is no current in this conductor. Close the switch and immediately a current passes through the circuit. The electrons are all moving towards the positive terminal of the battery. In the cell, chemical reactions are taking place. The cell attracts electrons into it at the positive terminal and pushes electrons out at the negative terminal. Light bulb P is passing electrons through it. See how they have caused the metal atoms to vibrate more and more vigorously about their positions. Electrical energy is being transferred to increase the internal energy of the light bulb. The evidence of this energy transfer is the light and the increase in the temperature of the light bulb. Now before we look at light bulb Q, can you predict what you should see? How will the brightness of light bulb Q compare to the brightness of light bulb P? And here you are. Light bulb Q has charge moving through it just like light bulb P, but there are fewer charges passing through per second. Notice the meter shows only 3 coulombs of charge passing through light bulb Q, where there are 5 coulombs of charge passing through light bulb P. The metal atoms are not vibrating as much as those in light bulb P. Do you now understand why light bulb P is brighter than light bulb Q? P is brighter than Q because more electrical potential energy is transferred to P than to Q. This happens because more coulombs of charge pass through P than Q in the same time interval. This is a very important concept. I want you to write down a summary of what you have learned from this experiment and these animations. The cell pushes charge around a closed circuit. Chemical energy in the cell is transferred as internal energy of the light bulbs. Current is measured as the amount of charge moved per second. Electrons transfer electrical energy to the components of the circuit. As I said at the beginning of the lesson, we want to find out what happens when electric current passes through a conductor. Let's look at our model again. Can you see that the flow of charge has increased the internal energy of the light bulb? Did you notice that the flow of charge transfers energy 
to the working parts of the circuit. It acts as an agent in transferring chemical potential energy from the battery to the internal energy of the components. That is the function of electric current. Now write this down. The flow of charge transfers energy from the battery to the electrical components in the circuit. As you know, an electric current is the rate of flow of charge. There are, however, a few other factors that will affect this flow of charge. Please remember this. The current depends on the amount of charge that moves past a point in a circuit. The current also depends on the time taken or the rate at which the charge moves past that point. Therefore, we must consider both the amount of charge that moves and the time that it takes to travel through the conductor. Let's go back to our model. When we count the number of charges moving through the light bulb in one second, in light bulb P, we find that there are more charges per second passing through the light bulb P than through light bulb Q. Therefore, the total amount of charge that moves past light bulb P in one second is greater than the total amount of charge that moved past light bulb Q. That means that the current in bulb P is greater. The size of the current is measured by the total amount of charge that will pass any point in an electric conductor in one second. Now how does this add to our definition of electric current? Current is the rate of flow of charge in a conductor. There were some tough concepts that you learnt in this lesson. So please make sure that you study the notes that you have written. That is very important. Thank you for joining me for this lesson, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.